Now, a completely other uh, subject here is there's the speed of light theorem that says that wires, you know, it diagonally you can't possibly travel faster than C over 4. And so what we're going to do here, I think it's go down a little bit over here, Bill, uh, and let this happen. Okay, so now we've got these wires, and they come into this, this you know, live object, and the, oops, sorry, uh, I just see the button by mistake here. Okay, so now you look over here, and get bigger again, uh, and then try again. Okay, so, um, I'm sorry. Okay, so then finally, you'll see that what happened was that the two gliders that were in the middle of the diagonal, you know, somehow got ahead. So in some sense, they flew it faster than the speed of light through this disturbance, uh, or kind of you know, hyperspace there or something. And then the same thing can happen, you know, the rule for, for horizontal motion is C over 2. Uh, so uh, if you have spaceships flying uh, uh, into this device here, they get, uh, again, time warped uh, ahead of, uh, uh, of the, the guys who are flying through the vacuum. So in other words, it's simply saying that if you're not flying through a vacuum, then the speed limit law doesn't apply. You could possibly even travel at the speed of light. And in fact, here's an example where something really does. Uh, this is a light speed telegraph. Right here we have uh, two, oh, you know, I should just do this. Uh, we have these two spaceships, um, which, can I just do this? Yeah, okay, we have these two spaceships, one heading this way, one heading this way, and now we speed this thing up, um, a little bit more, a little bit more, and we shrink it down. Okay, I'm sorry, shrink, shrink, shrink. What is going on here? Oh, there it is, okay. So anyway, this thing went up here, and now, uh, there's a, a light speed signal going down this wire, and then it's going to actually launch the, you know, the result of that. It's going to go in here and kill this guy. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, so again, so the lesson is, if it ain't a vacuum, then you know the speed limit is is involved. Uh, so, all right. So all of this, all of this cleverness, it, you know, can basically. Uh, you know, get tedious after a while. You know, whatever happened to the good old tradition of uh, just screwing around and staring for hours at the evolving consequences? And a, a perfect uh, medium for that is uh, is these things called line puffers. And line puffers, they fly along, and they are so vigorous that right behind the the engine here, uh, it goes through almost every possible binary state. It's just really, really vigorous. So if we let this thing run, and just chase it a little bit here, I guess. Uh, I just you, we can basically just screw around like this on a, on a, a satanic scale. Uh, and what I'll do is uh, instead of just staring mindlessly at this, uh, I'm going to fast forward it uh, 9.7 million generations and, uh, and show you, uh, you know, what it looks like later. And really, uh, there there are features of this thing, uh, like for instance the here uh, and here that have no right to be there, and it, it requires some serious investigation uh, to figure out uh, how they got there. Uh, but anyway, if you just go ahead and zoom in on the, uh, the thing, here it is still happily tooling along. Uh, what I want to do is uh, just grab that and, and uh, shift the lead again and blow away the entire exhaust plume uh, so that uh, you can just run this thing faster. Okay, so now I'm just going to chase this thing. Okay, so here we are, just, just still doing what it was doing. Oh, and it just collapsed. Okay, and it, it does that, I promise. Even if you don't, you raise the tail. Uh, it, it just was never a puffer train. Uh, and again, it's an example of what I just showed you before, and that is, if it's not a vacuum, there's no speed limit, or you know, the speed limit is, is C. And so what happened was some bad news blew up through that non-vacuous exhaust plume and overtook the puffer engine and killed it. And so if you don't see a period in a puffer train, you don't know you have a puffer train. Um, so now, uh, here's another uh, kind of fun, mindless activity. Uh, this is what we call a, a backfire uh, novelty generator. And uh, if I just do this, I need to, I, I really do need to run this thing next out there. Okay, auto fit, uh, hyperspeed, okay. So uh, this is a, uh, uh, what happened is at least, you might call these, uh, well, I guess they're, they're kind of like moonshiners who are uh, fleeing in two different directions from the uh, raid when they're still here at the origin and they're firing backwards. And so what's happening is the, uh, the, the backfired uh, uh, spaceships are piling up in this crystal and, then the, and there's also the spray from the crystal. And uh, what we see here is that the, there, there are uh, <coughs> some secondary emissions, I guess you call it fluorescence. 
and we have this extremely regular uh, pattern of gliders coming out of here. And so the, the only actual gliders being generated in this in this experiment uh, are here, and, and these other gliders spreading out here. That's just from the from the crystal tips, and of course that's supplying the energy. So uh, how can this be regarded as a novelty generator when there's no novelty? Well, in fact, there is a little. I mean, there are these little crumbs that are starting to form here, eight million generations uh, into the experiment, and. Uh, if we now uh, tell it to kind of hurry up a little, uh, I think we need to go out to you know, maybe about a step size of uh, two million here. Uh, it's going to take it a moment to adjust to that speed. Okay, so now now it's lurching along at two million two million clicks. Okay, and, uh, and the point of this is, I think when we get out to oh, it's ninety million. I mean, if we need to do another another uh, step size here, maybe uh, four million. Uh, okay, uh, how about? Eight so, yeah, we'll just have to, have to wait a little bit. It has to, uh, get, so now it's cranked up the hash table, and, uh, and now, we're, now, we're, now we're marching along 8 million per whack. Uh, I think we need to get up to that, uh, in, 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 one more thing, yeah, one more here. Yeah, um, I'm so much flabbergasted by that. Oh, there it is. Okay, oh, I missed this one. Here it is. I'm sorry. Way back in 90 million, uh, a glider came out of there. Okay, now, now we hack this thing and screw around for 90 million and then suddenly throw a glider out there. Well, uh, if you're a very patient sort of person, uh, then uh, you might watch it for 28 billion. And if we watch it for 28 billion, uh, which we need to you know, just load in here, uh, we'll see that instead of one glider out of here, we have a huge column here, two, two columns of gliders coming out of here. And in fact, we got one out of here. Now, in fact, we actually got one out of here back at, uh, at 5 billion. On, on here. See, there's one right there. Um, and so, uh, you know, boy, the, I can hardly, hardly stand the excitement. Uh, I mean, it's almost as good as penis enlargement span here. Uh, but uh, uh, now the question is, what, um, uh, you know, what would happen if we watched the thing for, say, a quarter of a trillion? And for that, I just have a screenshot because it would take a long time just to load it. Uh, and can only go in like one click of zoom into here. Uh, and now, you know, wowie zowie, we have lots of these. We have two of these. I don't know where's the other one. There. Yeah, right here. Two of these. And we have one coming out here. Okay, so how can this thing twiddle its thumbs? I mean, a little pattern. Remember, it was just two little bumpers, okay? It twiddled its thumbs for a quarter of a trillion uh, before making like a uranium nucleus right here and just, just blipping out one. Okay, so the question is at this point, I ran out of gigabytes. Uh, but uh, what would happen if we could watch this thing for a quadrillion or a quintillion, right? So, so that if we would have a, like a presumably a big dense line of these things the way we do over here. Uh, yeah, gee, we might even get one up this way, or I guess we'd get up inside here. Uh, and yippee dippy, uh, wouldn't that be exciting? Uh, but actually, probably something even more interesting would eventually happen because eventually we'd probably start making spaceships.